Hello, today we are continuing with wind energy series. In particular, we will address the topic of wind energy and wind power. There is not much we can say qualitatively about these things because uh, our everyday experience uh, shows us that wind has energy. If you go out and it is windy, you have to exert a certain amount of energy, so to say, uh, to uh, stand against the wind and not be knocked over. In today's video, at the end of the video, you will learn how much energy is in the wind and how much power is in the wind. Uh, as we know from high school physics, uh, power is only energy over time. So really the relationship between, between these two is simple. So without any further ado, let's go and derive available, available energy in a parcel of air. Or, a, so not parcel of air, but in a parcel of air that is moving, which is wind. Because this is wind energy series, we will consider a wind turbine sitting on the surface that looks, let's say, like this. So this is the tower of the turbine a cell and let's say this is the rotor. This rotor has the swept area A, right, which is the uh, diameter of the blades. And let's take this swept area like this uh, extended kind of. Now I will consider there is wind coming head on towards this wind turbine. I will have I will take a parcel of air that uh, looks like a cylinder that has base A and that base is the diameter of the uh, has the diameter of the rotor and the depth of this cylinder is let's call it D. So this is a parcel of air that will pass through my rotor and go to the other side. And this wind has velocity V. Well because the air is moving there is kinetic energy associated with its movement which is 1 square uh, 1 over 2 mass times velocity to the power of 2. Now the mass we need to ex, uh, ex, um, extract it in terms of uh, density of this volume of air. So mass is density times volume where capital V is, is volume, small v is velocity which is further density. What is volume? Well volume is the area of this parcel of air times its depth, but I know also that I can express this depth in terms of the velocity times time, right? So depth is simply the velocity of uh, that this parcel of air travels over the time t. Now I will substitute this m in the above equation and kinetic energy that I call k is 1 over 2 mass is density times area times velocity combined with velocity squared is velocity to the power 3 times time. And here it is. This is the equation that tells us how much it is energy in the wind, wind energy. we see that kinetic energy of wind is proportional to the velocity to the power of 3 and linearly proportional to time, area and density of air. Now, as I just said, power is energy, in this case kinetic energy over time, so this is simply, I just remove this T, it's 1 over 2 rho A V to the power of 3 and this is now equation for power density, uh, sorry, for uh, wind power. Let's call power in wind. A little bit troubling in this equation is A, because A, as you can see, is function of wind turbine, uh, or rather function of the uh, swept area of the wind turbine. 
So if we have a fellow that comes to us and says, oh, I have much bigger wind turbine, so if you calculated power using your wind turbine, it will not fit my wind turbine. Or somebody comes and says, I have much smaller wind turbine, so I need to recalculate this whole thing. In order to avoid these things, we usually ex express power in terms of power density, PD, which is power over area, which is clearly 1 over 2 rho velocity to the power of 3, and this is now power density. The beauty of power density, it is only function of wind, density of air and wind speed. Okay. To, to conclude, well, let me just have a little bit of whiskey. This was a very long day for me, guys. Beautiful. To conclude this video, let's just give a, an example that will show you firsthand how small changes in wind speed will result in very big changes in power density. Because as you can see, the relationship is to the power of 3. So, if I make the following table, where I will have, let's say here, wind speed in meters per second, then over here I will have power density. If I have wind speed of 5 meters per second, the corresponding power density will be 75 watt, so unit for power density is watt per square meter, is 75 watts per square meter, where I assumed that my air density is 1.2 kilogram per cubic meter. Now, look at this, guys. If I have just slightly stronger wind, 5.3 meters per second, only 0 0.3 meters per second difference, I will end up with power density in wind that is 89.3 watts, <coughs> watts per square meter. You can see that slight, slight change of wind speed results in significant almost this is almost 90 watts per square meter, significant change of power density. And just to demonstrate this even further, let's take 15 meters per second. Wind speed will give us power density that is uh, 2025 watts per square meter. <clears throat> let's just extend this exercise slightly and calculate here also energy density. What would energy density be? Well, it would be power density, PD times time. Because as I said, power is energy over time, so energy is power times time, which means that energy density would be this expression multiplied with time. And let me calculate this for a time that is one year. So T is one year, now, you can at home calculate how many seconds is in one year, that's very simple. So, if I multiply this with one year of seconds, I should get here 47.3 gigajoules. Here is, uh, so the energy dense, wind energy density associated with wind, uh, with one, with wind speed of 5.3 meters per second is uh, 56.4 gigajoules and finally as, uh, energy density associated with 15 meter per second wind speed is 1277 uh, gigajoules over one year so I'm using one year as you can see energy density is uh, increasing rapidly similar to power density with wind speed because it is also proportional to the wind speed of power 3, to the power of 3. Now, let's just assume, this is wrong assumption, but let's assume for the sake of argument that the energy in wind corresponds to electrical energy that we will produce using this wind speed. 
Of course, there are all, always some losses and we will address this in future videos, but just for the sake of argument, let's say we extract 100% energy from uh, this wind. You can see that at, if, let's say, mean annual wind speed is 5 meters per second, you would get this much energy, and if it is 5.3 meters per second, you would get significantly more energy for small changes in wind speed. If you get $1, again, just for the sake of argument, if you get $1 per, per joule of energy, here you would, of per joule of energy you deliver to the system, electrical energy, here you would get $47.3 billion over a year, and here you would get $56.4 billion. Huge, huge difference between these, th num these two numbers, but only slight difference in wind speed. Now, when you saw this, I hope you understand why wind energy projects are so dependable on uh, wind energy and wind speed. That's why when we are working in the sector of wind energy, we really want to find sites that have the best possible wind because small changes in wind speed over a long uh, run, one year, 20 years, will produce huge differences in delivered energy and therefore the project feasibility becomes much, much better. So small differences in wind speed result in very big differences in uh, wind energy and therefore very, very big differences in the amount of money that we will get from these uh, wind energy projects. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will see you in the next video. I have an excellent rest of the day. Thank you.